so welcome everyone. Um, so today I wanted to give you an update about the new feature that appeared in this MIS Builder over the last year. Uh, one year ago I was uh, doing a, a workshop uh, mentioning so, some of the most wanted features and uh, we've been fortunate to get some funding at least for, for some of them uh, during the year so we could, we could implement some. Uh, so I'll start with, with a short um, reminder of what uh, MIS Builder is. Um, so basically it's a tool to create a specific class of tabular reports where basically in rows you have uh, what we call key performance indicator or KPIs, which can be basically anything you want. It can be revenue, profit, some ratio, or anything you can uh, think of. Uh, it's basically made to and very efficient to query on accounting data, but there are features to query basically any uh, Odoo uh, model. And in columns, uh, what you can put uh, for, for the same KPIs on all columns, uh, you can have columns for different time periods, for instance, to give the current months or the previous year, uh, basically any uh, time range. You can also have different data sources like the actual data from accounting or uh, different budgets. You can create comparison columns like a difference or a percentage comparison to have like actual versus budget, for instance. And you can also, um, by using custom data sources, you can uh, like create uh, what's already committed on your budget. And you can create some and different columns like to compute what is available to purchase by, by doing the budget minus actuals uh, and maybe minus what you have committed to purchase already. So MAS Builder exists since uh, 2014 uh, and started with uh, OpenERP uh, 7. Over time, it's had many, many different contributors. So it's not just us at Axon maintaining, maintaining it. And uh, that, that's really a good thing. And we are trying also to keep it uh, on feature parity across uh, different Odoo versions. So currently, it's maintained from 10 to 13. And I think we'll continue to maintaining on 10 for one more year. And migration to 14 is already well underway. So these are examples of reports. So you see the, the different rows and, and, and the columns you can put with the different time periods. Uh, you see you can put styles, so you can give colors and fonts and, and so on. And those styles are going to be preserved on screen and on PDF and Excel uh, exports. So the key features is that uh, first is user configurable. So it's not as easy as a spreadsheet, but um, uh, for, for end users who are proficient with uh, spreadsheets, they, they learn to use it pretty fast uh, and it's not very difficult to create formulas. It's fast, especially on accounting data. Uh, it really works very well to, to, to do reporting, balance reporting on uh, million, on, on databases with million uh, journal items. You can create report templates, so a list of KPS and formula, and reuse them uh, in different reports for different data sources and uh, time periods. You can, can do comparisons, I mentioned, configurable styles. There is a drill down feature, we'll, we'll look into it in the demo, and the export PDF and Excel. Uh, budgeting is also a specific data source, and that's also a topic for today. And there is a developer API to do advanced stuff like uh, uh, looking at uh, what's available, for instance, to, to block a purchase if there is uh, not, not enough budget remaining. So the four features I, I like to show you today are uh, basically budgeting by GL account, which is a new feature this year. Uh, previously, you could budget by KPI, uh, and now you can also budget by account. Um, the concept of sub-reports, which is the ability to create uh, a report that reuses formulas from another report. Uh, that's very uh, useful to create, um, like a ratio based on, on a balance sheet. 
And then a new feature in analytic filtering, uh, the fact that you can add analytic filters in columns and also filtering on uh, analytic tags. So let's start with budgeting by GL account. So with the original MAS budget uh, that was created a couple of years ago, uh, you could budget by, by KPI. That means that you could uh, flag some KPIs as being budgetable and, uh, and then provide budget basically for any KPI, not only accounting data. That means that if you had um, uh, like a KPI, which could be the headcount uh, for, for your company or, or something not related to accounting, you could also budget on, on that too. And that feature still exists. Uh, but we have had feedback and some customer requests uh, that, that say um, that sometimes people really want to budget at the, the level of the GL account. Some do, some don't. But for those who want and really have their budget by, by uh, a budget for each of their PNL account, um, this budgeting by KPI was, was a, li a little bit uh, unpractical because, uh, for instance, you had to redo your budget for each report that would be using the, the same, same accounting data. So it was, was not always very practical. And there were some, um, some proposals in the community to, to do that by, by using the alternative uh, view, which is basically a, a SQL view that gives you some things that looks like uh, accounting lines, but uh, would, would come from, from a budget. Uh, the problem with that is that on, with, on that view, you need to give a specific date for, for each entry. And that, that was a, a limitation because, uh, for instance, sometimes you want to, to budget uh, uh, for, for the whole year, but do reporting uh, by, by quarter, for instance. And uh, that's something we can do with uh, MIS budget and that you cannot do if you have uh, the budget entries with, with a date. What we really want to have is a date range is for uh, each budget item. Um, so we have been fortunate to have a customer financing that. And uh, so it's now implemented. I'm going to show you uh, how, how it works. If I find my uh, demo window back, uh, where is it? It should be here. Um, so I'm going to my uh, accounting app. Uh, basically, I'm, sho uh, I'm showing it, uh, by the way, I'm showing it here uh, on the Odoo Enterprise version, but it works uh, really as well on the community version. We, we are trying to, to keep it compatible with, uh, with both versions. So I look at the MIS report templates and um, I've created uh, one simple uh, report here with uh, basically uh, four KPIs. Uh, the, the first one is the operating income with a formula which is going, which is uh, basically based uh, on the, the user, user type, so on, on, on the account type. And here we are uh, uh, making reference to the out of the box uh, Odoo account type to get the, the revenue. Um, by the way, if you don't know MIS Builder yet and want to know more, there are other talks uh, with uh, basic explanations on, on the formula, so you can look them up. Um, the, the other KPI is the cost of revenue, which is using the direct cost uh, account type. And the third formula is going to be the difference of the, the two other uh, KPIs. Um, here you see I've put a minus here in, on, in front of the first expression because uh, I the, the balance is de debit minus credit. So for, for a revenue, you want to have uh, uh, positive credits. And in this case, I want to have my cost to be positive too. So in this case, debit minus credit is going to, to work just fine. Uh, we can see also that I've put some styles. So uh, here, this one has no style. 
but we have checked to display the detail by account for, for this formula. So when we'll open this report, you, you, you'll get the detail for each DL account and a specific style for, for the detail here. And uh, like for the gross profit, I've put a style for, for the total. Uh, you can see I've put a background color, uh, a white text and uh, a, bold, a bold font. So that's uh, for the report template. Uh, now I'm going back to, uh, I'm going to create um, uh, a new report. And so it looks like this. So I create my PNL for 2020. Um, I'm going to use this uh, template. And I'm right away going into comparison mode so I can create my columns. So I, cre I create a column for 2020 actuals and the data source is going to be the actuals and the date range is going to be uh, the whole year in this case. So I can save this report definition. And when I do a preview, uh, I get uh, all, all those details and you see I have the total operating income. I have some moves for uh, the product sales, some foreign exchange gain, and the cost of revenue is here too. The drill down features uh, show you that you can click uh, to, get, um, to get access to all the move lines that contributed to, to that formula. And I can click at the account level. I can click, um, I can also click on the KPI level to get the full detail with uh, all the accounts that contributed to, to my revenue. All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, create a budget. So I first show you a budget by KPI uh, which was the, the, the previous feature. So budget by KPI. And uh, to create such a budget, I need to, to budget on specific, um, uh, specific template. This budget is going to be for 2022. Um, and when I've created my budget, I can go right to my budget item and say, uh, here I select my budgeted uh, revenue. You can say, I forecast it 1,000 for January. And I can say, like, I forecast it um, also maybe 2,000 uh, for, for February and I put some operating cost, some cost of revenue. And I say, let's say in this case, let's say I want to budget for, uh, oops, for the whole year. Um, so let's say I'm going to, to budget, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, yeah, 250 for, for the whole year, it doesn't matter for this demo. So here I have my budget by KPI. And if I come back to my, to my report, I'm going to add a column to my report. So that's my 2020 budget. I select my data source. It's a budget by KPI. I need to specify uh, which one. So I could have different budgets in, in my system. And let's say here I'm going to budget for uh, the to 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 display the budget for for the whole year. So it looks like that. I save and when I preview, here you can see that I get uh, the the budget uh, for uh, for each uh, for each KPI. But since I budgeted for uh, the top level KPI, I don't get the detail uh, for, for each account. Um, so I can go back creating another budget by account this time. And 
a jet by count. And this time I create, I mention my period. I say I budget item. And here, instead of selecting KPI, I can really select, um, I can really select um, uh, GL accounts. And you see that instead, of, it looks like move line, you have debits and credit and you can specify analytics, but uh, you see you, you are specifying your date range. So this means that um, if I'm going to specify my budget for the whole year and I'm going to, to, to report by quarter, for instance, but you, you, you will get a pro rata of, of that value for, for each quarter. And let's say I'm going to budget my revenue, my product sales. So 2020 again. And uh, let's say I'm typing this. And if I go back to my report, uh, in this case, I can add now a column for my budget by account. And budget by account. I display for the whole year up voila. oops I, I i need to select which budget i want to show because i could have more than one save and if i preview here you see that i get the detail of the budget for each uh, for for each uh, gl account um, so that that's really really useful because then if you do another report with different kpi based on the same accounts the, that budget will uh, remain uh, remain usable and one thing i could try for instance is add the column to say let's say i want to have the uh, the general budget in theory if you do that and my date range, I put January. You see that uh, uh, for this one, you 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 see three thousand because my budget was for for January, but for this one, you see two hundred twelve uh, because the budget was for the whole year, and the system has computed a pro rata temporis uh, for for my January period. So very useful. So I need to move on. So um, the second uh, feature I wanted to show you is the ability to use, uh, to create sub report, that is to use the KPI of a report in another report. And uh, for that, I've created uh, another template that's already uh, ready here. And you see that in this case, I have a sub report tab where I want to reuse uh, the KPI computed in my PNL report uh, in, in this other report where I'm going to put ratios. And to do that, I need to declare my sub reports and give them a name, PL in this case. And once I've done that, I can create um, expressions that reuse those uh, those sub reports so in this case i'm going to display my gross profit margin um, which is pnl dot gross profit divided by pnl dot uh, operating income uh, so you can imagine that with that you could for instance uh, reuse the kpi that you have in your balance sheet to create uh, the different financial ratios of, of your company uh, really easily without having to, to retype uh, complex formulas uh, more than once. And using that report in an actual template is uh, working exactly as any other one. And you can combine those uh, those formulas with uh, regular formulas like in uh, any other report. Uh, in theory, you, you can even budget on that because you could uh, 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 
because the, the, the budget is going to use the same data source, uh, those uh, subway to port expression should work in, um, in a budget uh, too. I can quickly try to create a report. Minimum ratios and this date range. And if I preview, I get my PNL ratio, which is 47% in my view. Not bad. All right. Now, um, third part the ability to add analytic filters on, uh, on columns. So that is a feature that's going to allow you, for instance, to do, um, uh, because usually you get exactly the same, uh, the same data source, uh, well, the, the, the same filters on, on all columns. The only filter that you have usually uh, and historically in uh, MS Builder was the date filter in, in column. And with this approach, you can now have analytic filters in different columns. So one thing you can do with that is, for instance, create a PNL by uh, by department. And to do that, I've already prepared a demonstration report here, where you see that I've created one column, which is 2020, with the actuals, uh, the date, but no no filter. And then a filter for department one. So we are also using the, the, the actual, so the, the regular accounting data, the same date range, but I've put a filter on analytic tags. And that is also a new feature this year that before you had only analytic account as filtering, now you have analytic tags uh, too. And that's very useful when you need to work with multiple analytic dimension, you could use for instance, classical projects uh, as analytic account, as is more or less the standard in Odoo, but you could use other dimensions uh, with uh, analytic tags. And so in this, in this column, I'm going to filter on department one, and on this column, I'm going to filter on uh, department two. And I've prepared some invoices uh, allocated to each uh, department. And when I do a preview, it looks like this. So yeah, to, to see all that you need to be in the analytic account group, uh, that's uh, fairly standard. And to see the filters and analytic tags, you need to enable the, the permission for the user to, to see uh, analytic tags. But when you have done that, you see that um, uh, the same figure that, uh, that I had before, uh, because those are, are not filtered by, by any analytic filter. But those two, I, I'm seeing only the invoices for Depart 1, Department 1 and Department 2. And I can, I can drill them. Unfortunately, in this view in Odoo, we don't have the analytic tags. Uh, uh, I think maybe something to check, but I'm not sure the analytic tags are present in a default move line. Uh, we need to check. And here too, uh, you can, you can uh, drill down too. Uh, and that works with budgets too. So when you look at budgets, like a budget by account, you see that uh, on each budget line, you can um, uh, specify an analytic account and or analytic tags. So you can really do a fine grain budgets, uh, like doing a budget by, by department by, by specifying the, the analytic tags or budget by project uh, if you want to. So, oops, this one, budget by department. And also, of course, you, you still have those filters here. So you could uh, say, even though I specified, um, uh, so basically there is a fixed filter in each column, but I, I can also be more restrictive. So I could uh, add a filter here. So in this case, I see only what concerns department one. Uh, 
and, and, and those are cumulative. So if I say department one and department two, it's not going to work. That's the most common use case that when you combine analytic tech, they are in different dimensions. So it really makes sense to, to do an end uh, with the two. And you could, for instance, say, uh, that's my report by department, but if I want to, to do it done by project, I can do that too and refresh. And here I have uh, the, only what concerns the, the, specific, uh, the specific project. Uh, and that feature basically is really easy to extend uh, because you, you basically have a, a generic um, filter group here which is uh, pretty easy to extend for your, for your use case. For instance, there are enhancement uh, proposals uh, to add a filter by company. So if you're a multi-company context, you could have one column for each company, or uh, there is a request to do filtering by journal, or uh, there is also uh, a consideration to add a generic uh, domain filter, so you could uh, let the user create its own domain uh, here for more advanced use cases. Um, and analytic tags, basically, that uh, was part of my previous demo. So time is flying. Um, Basically, we have we have had many contributions in the past, and uh, we are really welcoming them. So, I'm trying hard to to classify feature requests in in GitHub. So, if you look at uh, the issue that I flagged for enhancement, uh, these are, are things that have been discussed already or are being discussed. Um, there are some very easy ones or more complex ones. Um, if you need new feature, uh, really feel free to propose. Um, since we try to maintain a high quality level uh, across all branches, we, we take time to discuss the, the feature because we want the, the, the module to, to really remain very generic. But uh, really feel free to open an issue to discuss and also usage questions are, are very welcome. Uh, I answer as time permit. It's not always easy, but I do my best to, to keep on top. And contributing functional documentation is always very welcome. Uh, that's something that's uh, lacking because it's a quite complex module, very powerful, but quite complex. There is some documentation uh, that was contributed by the late Eric Kodal, but uh, it's still there to be, to be improved. The documentation is in uh, RST format in the repo. And if you want to contribute some documentation, don't hesitate to get in touch with me and I will guide you on how to, to use uh, the documentation format and, and generator. So this is it for me. Thank you very much. And I'm open to questions. Well, thank you, Stefan. And, and that was a great update on MIS Builder. And we have had one question come through on the chat and the new features, which version are these available for? Uh, all of them basically from 10, 11, 12, and 13. And uh, most of them work in 14 already on the migration branch. Excellent. Um, and one more question that's just come through from, from Jeff Wang is, um, do you plan to split this module to MIS Builder Engine and MIS Builder Accounts? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Maybe you want to provide a bit more context there, Jeff. I, I, I guess if I was trying to understand it, he, he has a view that the mechanics of MIS Builder could be used in modules, in models outside of accounting. But I'm not so sure with the way that it's architected. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the, there is a, a feature which you can use um, it, it requires a little bit of development, but basically that's just creating a SQL view um, that, that looks like uh, accounting move. Like 
for instance, I think here I, we have this uh, demo module. If you look at the MS Builder demo, um, there is a SQL view that shows committed budget, committed uh, committed costs, and committed costs are actually computed in that demo by looking at the approved uh, purchase orders and combined with the draft invoices. So you're able to, to see, uh, and when I say approved purchase, it's approved purchase that you have, for which you have not received invoice yet. So with that, uh, it's pretty easy to, 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 to compare the actuals with uh, what, what you have committed. And the way you configure it is that once you have defined that model, which is a view, a traditional uh, view model in a SQL view model in Yodoo, you use the actual alternative and, and then you can choose any model that, uh, that is compatible with uh, the, the move line model. So basically it must have an account, a debit, a credit, a date, um, a company, and if you are doing analytic, it must have the, the same analytic fields as your main move line. So that, that's one possibility. And the other possibility is to use, um, a, in the templates, there is the, this query tab where you have the possibility to, to add uh, basically uh, a domain. It can be, uh, I don't know, the, the hours uh, that you get from the IHR. Um, but I don't have the timesheet module here, but you could, you could, for instance, do a query on the timesheet to get the hours uh, uh, and, then, and then put that on, on, your, on your report to compare revenue with time spent, for instance, and, and things like that. This, this query tab is, uh, lacks a little bit documentation. Maybe one day I should do a talk about it. But there is some in, in, in the, the documentation. Um, so you, you can try to use that to access data that is not um, uh, uh, available from the, the accounting directly. I don't know if that has answered the question. If not, I, I'll be available on Discord to. To Sorry, I've lost my sound here, so I'm sure that you're all. I still hear you. Um... Front left. <laughs> Front left. That works. Unfortunately, do I see the chat window? Or can look so th there is one more question, Stefano. It's from yes. Raphael. But we're out of time, so we might just want to take that over to the um, to the track one because they, they're generally never short questions when they come from Brazil. Um, and um, we'll move on to, to our next presenter. So thank you very much for your time. Um, and I guess we'll all. see you back here in about 20 minutes, won't we? Okay, I've been hanging out in the in track one anyway. So if you have questions, I'll be. Oh, I'd sorry, I mean in the Discord track two. Sorry, I've been, been track running two, around. Yeah, sorry, it's track two, three. and there is the MIS Builder uh, channel on Discord too. I'll be hanging around there. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for a wonderful uh, update.